Just a few minutes, Pastor Hank. I, I, I know what I know in my heart that there's God's put something on you. And uh, I want you to share that. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray. I know Pastor Hank has a word, but after that, we're going to talk about your children uh, in another vein than what we haven't done yet before. But right now, as we, this is our last event, Pastor Hank, the church needs to be the church. That's really all it is. And the only way we can do that is wholly, completely lean on Christ. I know, I know you have a word. Well, I want to say that I just want to talk something out, and then I want to, if I can just move uh, as Please. I feel the spirit uh, of the Lord here. I think the most important thing that we have to do, Jesus asked a question to his disciples, and I think he, you know, Jesus asked a lot of questions, and he's asking a question today, and here's the question he asked his disciples, and you can find it in Matthew 16, and he asked his disciples, he said, who do men say that I am? And all of the disciples except one could give him what others were saying about Jesus. And they said this, and pay attention to the first two people that they compared the Messiah to. They said, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Of the very two that they would start with that people were saying that Jesus was like, do you understand that John the Baptist and Elijah were two of the greatest nonconformists? They were two of the greatest reformers. These were men of incredible boldness that spoke against the corruption and the culture of their days. And the, the, the word on the street was, this is Jesus who they're saying you are. You are like John the Baptist. You are like Elijah. And so we have to do something. Then Jesus turns around and says, no, 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 no. It's not enough to base something off of somebody else's revelation. Who do you say that I am? And I think the reason that, as I'm listening to this tonight, that we have the conflict that we have in our churches. And by the way, uh, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm contesting, but uh, I do believe in strong women in the pulpit because I have one. I have Pastor Brenda. Now, what she does is she uh, honors her husband. She understands the role of authority and her role. What we've done is we have reduced the image of Jesus and feminized everything. Right. That's what her point was. So don't think that she's saying that women don't have a place and such. And I, by the way, would trust my wife teaching uh, young men because she would do it the right way and she would bring her husband in and honor that. But here's the point. Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And they said, uh, well, only one man, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, hey, blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah. Flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my father. And I think there are challenges. And this is what we have to think about as we head into 2024. People keep asking me, what is God saying about 2024? And he came into my room about two months ago by way of a visitation. He said, tell the people that they have to strengthen their intimacy with me, Hank, with God. Seek me like they've never sought me before. That's really what God is looking for, that you carry your own individual revelation of who God is. Who is God to you? Who is Jesus? Have you met him? Have you seen him? And then he said, bind the thief, because the enemy will try to do many illegal things. Well, he only has illegal access if we give him that, because Jesus then turned around to Simon Barjona, and he said, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I will build my ecclesia. I will build my kingdom and its expression in the public square that will affect every aspect of society, culture, judicial, everything. It's not to hide behind a pulpit. And then he said, I give you keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind upon earth, whatever you restrain, whatever you restrict, come on, I will do it in the court of heaven. I will back you. And whatever you loose and whatever you declare upon this earth, come on, if we've had enough of the nonsense, we need to stand before God and before the earth, and we need to say no more. We are not going to. But if you have a wrong revelation of who Yeshua is, he is the lamb, but he's also the lion. And then you see him in Revelation 19, he is the warrior. And I had something happen one time. Can I stand up? Please. Please. Uh, so I had something happen to me one time, and it was this. I had Jesus appear to me. He came to me, and I was in this vision, and I, I didn't know it was him at first because I was seeing this uh, figure off in the distance. And uh, he was shouting with great authority and great command, uh, the troops. And all of a sudden, he turned 
from the troops and he started walking towards me and he started walking towards me. I'm telling you, my whole being began to vibrate. My heart, I, I, I tell you, I've never felt this like this. It was beating very fast. And he walked up to me and I did not know it was Yeshua. He was wearing a white t-shirt and combat fatigues. And he looked at me and he said, what's the matter? Did you not recognize me? And I fell to my feet and I said, no, sir. He said, that is the problem with my people. I choose to manifest myself according to what I'm doing in a generation. He is the warrior right now. He is not just the lamb, but he is the lion who is roaring very loud. I want us to stand to our feet for a moment because I want to do something that I believe every one of us has the ability. There's a scripture that I want to give to you as you say, well, what can I do tonight? As I was sitting there, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, you tell the people that Hebrews 11, how many remember verse 7 where the Bible says that Noah was, watch this, warned of God. To the preparing, watch this, of an ark, to the saving of his house. Every one of us has a moral responsibility, first of all, to recognize that that was Noah's ark. But what is it today? What does it represent today? Well, it represents you as the personal ark. Do you know why? I asked the Holy Spirit one day. I said, Holy Spirit, why did you come in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost as a rushing mighty wind? Why did you just come gently? And he spoke several things to me, but he said, one reason I came as a rushing wind is because I could not wait to fill the people. And I was excited. And I also understood that what they were about to face in culture, government, politics would require the force of what they felt and were imparted to. They couldn't carry it as a weak, limp-wristed, weak-kneed church. They had to feel the force of what empowered them. And I believe tonight that the Spirit of God is going to come in this, church, in this church, this assembly, and those, I don't know where the camera is, those of you that are watching, where there is going to come a wind of the Spirit of God that is going to blow in your home. That's right. And you know, in Acts 4, when they were persecuted, they went back to their own company. We have to stay together, folks. This is why we've got to keep supporting Flashpoint. We've got to keep coming together because there is power when we come together in our own company. We can change the world. We can bring America back to its greatness. But it's going to require us to prepare an ark. First of all, you've got to prepare yourself. Get the revelation of Jesus right. He is not limp-wristed. He's not weak-kneed. He's not a coward. He's not just restricted to his church. He wants us out, what he told Peter, in the public square, showing the true light of the kingdom of God. Second, you have to prepare the ark of your home. Don't be like Lot. Quit shoving your children in front of the television set. Quit supporting Disney resorts and Disney, uh, you know, cruises and, and, and these places that you know that are woke and, and that are doing things that are destroying the image of your child. You have to prepare an ark. You have to prepare a safety. Let your house be a safety, a place that is a standard. You know what Noah's ark was? It was a standard in a corrupt day. You have to stand and raise a standard in this time. Because you know why? The Spirit of God is about to come here. In Acts 4, what did they do? They prayed among themselves. The place was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Some were already filled, but there was a fresh impartation. And they prayed something that I feel God is going to give to every one of us. And you know what it is? It's the spirit of boldness. You know, boldness, God is attracted to it. How many would say, man, I would love to receive an impartation of boldness? All right, let's go to the throne of God. Heavenly Father, we honor you tonight. We thank you that as we come to your throne, that the same Spirit of God that is in the earth that was sent here, that's a rushing mighty wind of God that blew into an upper room, that filled 120 and caused them to stand up in an authority, in a boldness. Peter, who denied 
the Christ, yet he stood with unction, with authority, and not of his own might or power, but by the Spirit of the living God. He spoke and he declared, this Christ you crucified. And he began to declare, and 3,000 were added to the church because of something that supernatural came upon him. Not of his own might, it was the Spirit of God. And I pray, even as it was in Acts 4, where they were gathered together, and there was great persecution, and there was that which was injustice that was taking place at that time in the city square. Yet they came together, they gathered together, they prayed and they sought you, and they said, Oh God, stretch forth your hand and grant your servants more boldness. And so, God, tonight I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that you, the rushing wind of the Spirit of God, would bring a fresh impartation upon everyone, that you would break the powers of fatigue, that if there has been any mind-binding spirits of, of witchcraft and divination and fear and anxiety, we break its power and we release now an anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage. We release upon the people now an anointing that lifts them from heavy burdens. And we release an anointing now that comes upon them, that their eyes will be open, even as Elisha prayed and said, Oh God, open the eyes of the people. And their eyes were open, and I pray, open their eyes to see what you see to hear what you hear. And God, to have your perspective in a day where there are false narratives, there are lies, and there are things by way of deception, and the angel of light has appeared. But you are the God of light, true light. Therefore, enlighten the people. Open their eyes, and may they truly see now. And may they receive an impartation of your boldness, that they will rise up, and they will stand, and they will prepare an ark, and they will have a righteous standard, and they will love like Yeshua, righteousness and they will abhor they will hate iniquity and they will speak out against iniquity they will stand against injustice not in their own might or power but they tonight shall receive an anointing of boldness and just say, say Lord I receive I receive I receive the anointing of boldness and so it would be says the spirit of God that many are gathered here tonight and those that are listening. And they are saying, God, we are hearing things that cause our hearts to be troubled, that cause our hearts to be in fear. Is there a day of justice? Is there a day of vindication? Is there a time where, God, you shall come and you shall bring about a change? And the Spirit of the Lord says, I have been declaring it and I have been speaking this through my prophets that this is the time and this is the hour of great change. For I have said and I have declared before that there has been that which has been dark. There has been that which has been gross darkness. But yet I am the God of the light. And I am coming now in a way that you have not understood. And I am coming in a way that God says shall cause the darkness to begin to be uh, disrupted, interrupted, and abated. You will begin to see great signs even here in California. For you will look up and you will look into your clouds and you will say what are these strange lights what are these lights that seem to come from the heavens even into our areas into our cities what is happening with these strange phenomena of moving light and light that seems to have a brilliance of color that we have not seen before the spirit of the Lord says this I will show not only in the state of California but I will show these wonders across the United States as you head into 2020 and as you are in 2024 because I will show that you have seen what darkness looks like now I will show you what portals are looking like with heaven's invasion with my angelic forces and my light that is coming to break through the darkness the corruption and the evil that has come at this time and look now says the Spirit of God there are those who will say is this a rainbow is this the rainbow is this the sign of God's covenant and I will cause my rainbow to be seen over historical images you watch God says over historical images you look and you will see the sign of the rainbow you will look and you will see the rainbow in places of deep corruption and 
Why would it be that this rainbow will appear over places that men say is dark, is evil, is corrupt, or this is our history of our country? The Spirit of God says, because I shall remind the people that even though there is evil, I have heard the prayers of a few who have cried out to me, and they have said, God, would you remember your covenant, and would you honor that which has been dedicated and given into your hands? And I have said, yes, and so I will show the power of my covenant, and I will show you the power uh, that I keep my word, and I watch over it to perform it. So look to the signs of the rainbow, and it will not just be one. Can there be that which they say, is this a triple rainbow? And the Spirit of God says, yes, because I will show something that will cause men to marvel, and they will say, this is much strange. But the Spirit of the Lord says, no, I am touching three generations, and I am raising up something that shall be Begin to happen. Listen to me, California. God says they have left you, but there is a gold rush of a different kind that shall come, for there shall be a great return unto this state. Because as it was with Elijah who put and built an altar in the place of deep, deep darkness and corruption in the days of Jezebel and her false prophets. Yet he set forth an altar of an evening sacrifice. I have seen your sacrifice. I have heard your prayers. I have seen the darkness. I have heard and I have seen the commotion of the false and the wrong and the evil and the corrupt in your state. But yet I have seen also what I have released upon this state of the spirit of Elijah. That there are those that are standing and they are saying, but we will stand for truth. We will stand for justice. We will stand for God and we will stand for the children. And because of that stand of the few... I will bring fire and I will cause there to be a shaking for they have prophesied and said California you will break away and you will go out into the sea God says do not make me laugh but you will break away you will break away from liberalism you will break away from corruption you will break away from that which the enemy thought that he could hold you and there shall be a sea that shall begin to flow throughout California and it shall be a movement of those who say we have had enough and the spirit of God says watch they will not be able to steal, kill, or destroy as my hand shall come anew over you. So look to the signs. I will bring you light. I will display my rainbow. And I will break the drought as I send glorious rain as a sign. It shall happen, says the Spirit of God in this time. As we wrap up, I am not going to let you go without praying for your children and your grandchildren. If one thing you've learned or you've heard about in the last two days is how we must come together, we must unify, we must be there for each other. So listen, real boldly, I'm going to ask you, if you've got a child that's away from God, if you've got a grandchild that's away from God, put your hand in the air and hold it there. Look around. That's your brothers and your sisters. Now, those of you, reach over and lay your hands on somebody that has their hands up or a hand up. We're going to pray for the prodigals. Even if you have your hand up for yourself, lay your hand on somebody else. Come on, this is kingdom business right here. This is, this is better than showing up at a school board right here. This is the church being the church. Heavenly Father, I pray over every prodigal, every hand raised, every prodigal represented by the families raising their hands and say, we will not give up our children. We will not give up on our grandchildren. We will not let go. Those children that were raised the right way, they were raised in church and have gone the other way, they will return. They will return. We call it so in the name of Jesus. Lord, send laborers across their paths. Open doors. Open doors of repentance. 
and renewal. Let them see, oh my, this is what have I been doing? I need to go home. I need to go home. I need to be home. Thank you, Father. The doors are being opened. People's eyes are being revealed. Transgender surgeries are being canceled in Jesus' name. Now we speak to the state of California and say, you come in line with the Spirit of God. You come in line with the Scripture. You government officials that are intending to go across the biblical threshold, we call it null and void. So to those that would stand up and say, you're just a Christian nationalist, you're just an ultra right winger, we say, no, we are the body of Christ. And we are not gonna give up, we're not gonna give in, we're going to continue to stand for what's right because that's what America was founded on and that's our biblical heritage. We have a covenant. You and I have a covenant. And if you know anything about Kenneth Copeland and where I work and the man that has written a book about the covenant, you and I have a covenant. And when we take communion, you're celebrating that covenant. You're renewing that covenant. And when we take communion, I, I challenge you between now and Christmas, between now and Christmas, take communion every day over those children over those grandchildren, over those relatives. Maybe they're not your children. Maybe it's your father. Maybe it's your mother. Maybe it's your aunt, your uncle, whoever that you're standing in for. Take communion over them every day. Remind yourself of the covenant that you have. Because Jesus went to the cross, he suffered and bled and he died and he rose again, you have a covenant with him that no man, no government, no liberal can ever take away from you. Now it's your turn to stand up and take it and walk, act on it. So Father, we thank you. I thank you for each person here. I thank you for the families here. I thank you for those watching by television. Listen, if you're watching by TV, there's a phone number on your screen, 877-281-6297. I dare you to call that number. I dare you to call it and pray with a prayer minister on the other line. And you go, well, I don't need it. No, you don't need to, but I dare you to. Because that's where hope is. Listen, we all know, if you've been in church for a little bit, you know Matthew 18, 19, where two or more are gathered. Well, we're definitely more than two. And those of you at home, you can say, well, I'm here alone. There's your two on the other end of that phone line. That's right, and all of us, we're standing in agreement. Call the number. Pasadena, thank you. Pastor Cheon, thank you so much for letting us be here. I believe God, Pastor Hank, Pasadena, Pasadena, after today, will never be the same. This is what we did in Atlanta. He said, we drove a stake in the ground in Atlanta and said, we stand for what Jesus did for us. The next day or two, those Georgia guide stones got hit by lightning. I don't care what you hear. They got hit by lightning and were wiped out. I believe you're going to see some things happen here in this area, Southern California. We're not, we're not giving up on California. We're not letting it go. Go back, listen to that word from the Lord that you just heard, and stay tuned to Flashpoint.